Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Now, I have to tell you, I'm terrible at remembering chords. Of course, if I'm playing a song regularly, then I can get by. But if I leave a song for a year or two and then, or even just a week or two, and then come back to it, I've completely forgotten the chords. And in many cases, I've even forgotten which key it is in. And if you start playing the song in the wrong key, then it pretty quickly goes disastrously wrong. Not only that, but I can't even remember which songs I know. So when somebody says, play a tune, or if I'm doing a synthesizer or a piano demonstration and I need to come up with a song quickly, then I'm uh, stumbling um, <laughs> to know what to play. So I thought it's about time I did something about this. I'm going to start making notes of all the songs I know in my musical notebooks. Yes, plural, I have a couple of them. In this video, I'm going to share my process, uh, a little bit about how I notate my songs and the evolution of my musical notebooks or Woody Piano Shack song cheat books, cheat sheets, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> now, that was a terrible introduction, but I'm not recording it again, so we'll just have to put up with it. Thanks for bearing with me. Okay, let's get you in a little bit closer and I'll show you what we have here. Okay, so here we have iteration one and this is actually a Filofax clip book. I like this because it's a ring binder so you can add or remove pages as you want as compared to a conventional notebook. So here you can actually arrange the songs as you want or in al alphabetical order in this case and even insert new songs as you learn them in the correct position. So a ring binder, ring binder like this one is really nice. And this I'm really happy with actually. It's got a lovely leatherette style binder that's quite soft but feels quite rugged. So that was my choice of notebook that I used here. And so alphabetically we have some of the songs. I've already shared the process of how I'm learning these songs on the channel. If you look up my learning 200 new songs, because that's my ambition is to learn 200. I've actually got a list of about 300 now. And it might sound a lot, but in the last few weeks I've actually learned 100 songs. Uh, so I've got some catching up to do on the videos there. Here we go then. My first iteration I'm using a Sharpie to write on just plain paper. So I bought a whole bunch of extra paper, like a refill from Filofax that I could use to jot down the chords. So here you can just see a slightly more complicated song, Africa. I've done the presentations of these on the channel on some previous videos. And this is fine, but I'm not really very happy with it. My handwriting is not particularly great. As you can see, I'm using a Sharpie to make it nice and bold so that I can see it from a distance. I don't have great eyesight unfortunately. So I did it with a sharpie to get lots of nice contrast and a nice bold font but it does bleed through onto the back like that. It looks kind of ugly. And I'm only using one side of each sheet so it's a bit inefficient really and a waste of paper I suppose. The other thing is if you notice a mistake here then you have to either correct it on the page it starts looking a little bit messy or you just have to rip it out and write it out all over again, which is a little bit time consuming and you're just as likely to make a mistake as you copy it out the next time as well. But this is version one of the notebook. I'm quite happy with it actually. It's a lot better than nothing. And let's see, we've actually got all the way up to, in this book, Golden Brown, Gypsy Woman, Here I Go Again, Here I Go Again is the last one. So this is version one of the notebook. In the background here, you can see version two. So I'll explain how we got to this. So what I started doing later is adding the chords here. I thought it would be quite nice as I'm doing the videos, sharing how I'm learning these songs, would be to actually copy paste the chords onto the video as an overlay. So you could actually see a little bit better what I'm doing rather than me, rather than me just holding up my song book there. So I started doing this which was pretty cool, just a text document so I didn't have to mess around with all of the formatting. But then I came to the realization that it would be nice to have this online in the cloud instead of just a text document on my PC so I can access it from any computer or my phone and whatever. So I moved everything over to Google Docs and then I thought this is also quite nice because I could share it perhaps 
as well with other people, maybe to start with my patrons and channel members and supporters and so on. So they could also, they could also see the songs that I'm working on, the chords, and as you saw, the lyrics were there as well. That works out great, of course, but now all of a sudden I have two versions. I have the version here in my physical analog notebook and another version in the cloud. So I have to maintain two of them and keep them in sync. And what I ended up doing as I was learning songs, I was bashing them into the Google Docs, maybe doing 10 or 20 songs in there, and then having to transfer it over to the analog songbook over here and just copy out all of the chords that were in the Google Docs, which was a little bit tedious. And again, I tend to make uh, mistakes and not get it 100% right all of the time. So maybe I don't even need a notebook at all and should just have everything digital, but I'm a bit old school and I like the idea of having a notebook. But then I had a bit of a brainwave. I have a rather old HP laser printer and it suddenly occurred to me, I don't know quite how, but I noticed that the paper tray, you could adjust the size, you could shrink it in and out, and it would actually accept A5 paper. And that gave me an idea. So I bit the bullet and decided to do a bit of formatting instead of just having the plain text. It's a lot more work for me, but there's a huge advantage, as I'll tell you in a second. So what I've done is set up the page size to a5 here in Google Docs. You can see the page breaks here. I've decided to go for one song per page, just like we had before. You can see that here. I've got the, I've used different fonts, uh, a nice bold, large font here for the chords, and then the lyrics underneath, less important to me. But it's good to have them there if I want to warble along as I'm playing a song. So you can see this is pretty nice. And you can see where I'm going with this. Now that I've figured out my printer can support A5, the Google document is formatted in A5 page layout with all the right borders, margins, and so on. So I can just print this out. So I went out and bought myself another ring binder, another clip book, because I really do love them. This one in A5 format though, instead of, yeah, I didn't mention this is the Filofax personal notebook size. It's a slightly unusual size of paper. I decided to go for A5 so we can get more on the page. Also, if I end up sharing this online, then it's more convenient for other people because everywhere in the world, I think maybe not the US perhaps, you can get A5 paper, whereas the Filofax personal size, a little bit more niche. So here we have it, another clip book, and you can see how it looks as we print it out. Now, the advantage here is I can print it on two sides. Okay, so we're not wasting paper anymore like we were before. And I think you'll agree this is a lot nicer than my handwriting. No bleed through on the pages, everything crystal clear. So you can see I've made a lot of progress with this. Just flicking through, you can see some of the songs that we've got coming up. Uh, and actually I've made a huge amount of progress. I've done about 100 songs so far, I think. Let's see what letter we have reached. We are up to, oh, pretty much the same. Here I go again, Heroes by David Bowie is the last one I've printed out, but in the Google Docs, we have a slightly more up to date. So I'll share a bit of B-roll as I print out some of these pages. It is a little bit challenging because as you put the paper through the printer, uh, I want to print both sides, but it's that's a manual thing. You have to put it in twice. And the first time you put it through, the page is all, curl up and the second time you put it through because they're curled up they sometimes uh, jam or the printer tries to pull through two sheets at a time and that just messes up everything. Uh, another thing you might see the paper is slightly yellowish. I did order a bulk set of uh, refill not non filofax like some unbranded paper but it's really really nice quality. I just got that from Amazon. This is the refill that you get when you buy a new clip book. It's got like a lot of the organizer features. That's a calendar you can fill in, for example, and a mixture of blank, checked, and lined paper. Yeah, I really do like the old Filofaxes. I used to be a Filofax guy way back in the 90s, but of course, when we got smartphones, stopped using them. But there you go. 
I'm really happy how this came out and I'm very proud of my musical notebook, my songbook, cheat sheets, call it whatever you like. And it's very satisfying and fun, I think, to work through songs and learn all the chords and get a better understanding, some insight on the structure and the harmonies, the melodies and the chords that are being used. It just adds to my enjoyment of all of these fantastic tracks. <laughs> Dancing Queen there by ABBA. That was a really tough one to figure out the chords. But all of those videos will be coming up. Yeah, so I have this video series, Learning 200 Songs. It hasn't been very popular, I'll admit that to you. The analytics don't lie and you guys don't want to watch it. But I do have a few ideas how to make it slightly more entertaining or interesting to watch at least. So I'll push on with this a little bit more. But if you guys don't watch them, then I'll just uh, scrap the video series and do this offline because it's something that I really want to do for my own benefit anyway. And I'm uh, immensely enjoying the process. As you can probably see, I have a lifetime supply of this stuff. Awesome. This was quite uh, inexpensive, this third party paper. But I would recommend you look out for the pre-punched because the, uh, the Filofax hole spacing is slightly unconventional. You just save yourself a lot of time and hassle by having it pre-punched for you. So look out for that before placing your order. My only regret is that I didn't start doing this years ago because then I'd have accumulated thousands of songs, not just two or three hundreds. So I'd strongly encourage you guys to give it a go as well, or at least think about doing so. Because my only regret is that I didn't start earlier. Uh, so yeah, I think you'd get a lot out of it as well. 
Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next time. Keep an eye out for the 200 Piano Songs series. And also I will get around to sharing this Google Docs with my Patrons channel members, those of you that are supporting me financially. as a bit of a thank you, a, a bit of a reward or a perk. So that if you want to, you can look at it online or even print it out yourself. That's all for now. Cheerio.